Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. And today, we got volume 8 of the disturbing part of the internet. We all get right into this, ladies and gentlemen. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment your thing down below. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Manscaped. Welcome to the 8th episode of this format. I again have a lot of topics for this episode. If you're new and haven't seen the previous episodes, check out the playlist on the channel to get caught up. If you have topic recommendations for this format, please let me know on my Instagram or make a post on my subreddit. Before we start, I made a giveaway in the last episode and the winner already received their money. I asked you guys for your Instagram handles, which caused the algorithm to identify the comments as spam. Consequently, around 500 comments were deleted. To make up for the mistake, I'll again give away $50. To participate this time, you only need to subscribe to the YouTube channel and leave a comment down below. You can write whatever you want. I'll pick a random winner in the next few days. Let's start with the video. Family, family Guy YouTube channel update, okay? You know. Let's start the episode with an update on the Family Guy YouTube channel from last episode. I talked about a YouTube channel, which is uploading Family Guy compilation videos to YouTube. While this seemed fairly harmless, the videos included a few suspicious segments. Towards the end of these videos, you could see little children. The clips were taken from a YouTube channel called The Arrow Faction. While it was theorized that the clips were used to avoid copyright, a different YouTuber confirmed that the content from Arrow Update. Something interesting just happened. Within 30 minutes, the Arrow Faction plays a copyright claim on my video, so let's not with that. Arrow okay. Faction and is under the copyright. This was on last week's video. Last, not last week. But yeah, I think it's been over a week. Last, last week's video. Copyright ID system. The Family Guy YouTube channel also has a Telegram link in its video descriptions for business inquiries meaning he somehow makes money with stolen content, which also seems somewhat sketchy. After the release of my video, the channel owner made a community post which states the following. The short video at the end of each Family Guy video is my way to avoid copyright. If people don't like it, I'll hide the girls in the next video so please don't mind that and enjoy the Family Guy videos. As a result, in each subsequent upload, he hit the face of the girl with the gif emoji which honestly looks somewhat off. I still do not understand why he refuses to replace the footage of the children with different footage. He could literally take any copyright free stock for- That's what's so weird about it. That's why I couldn't just say, oh, it's just a copyright thing. There is something you easily could do. Why does it need to be little girls from a, a different YouTube channel? And I'm still always thinking that the you the Arrow family, the Arrow faction or whatever they're called, has to be aware of it. And they're leaving it, so clearly they don't have no issue with it. So either they just don't care, or they'll they know who the channel owner is. Footage from Pixabay or something, but instead uses videos of children. There's also an interaction that one of my viewers had with the channel owner on Telegram. I don't have all of the screenshots anymore, but. It In one of the screenshots, the viewer asked him as to why he uses children in his videos and he said that it's a secret and that he cannot tell anyone about it. I don't want to speculate too much, but that's all of the information that I want. My man. I believe, I still will stick with, I believe the Arrow Faction is way more aware of this than they meet to the eye. I was able to gather ever since I dropped the last video. Make of this what you will. Big cops ring This is a very recent case. On a night in September 2021, someone would knock on the door about 3 a.m. in the morning. The homeowner checked his dollar camera. I love this one. Because this is so badly done. I have never seen fake cops. Because we did a whole thing on fake cops. We did a whole reaction video on fake cops. 
This is not fake cops. These are two. You you couldn't look like more robbers. You you might as well have a sticker, this big plastered on your chest that just says "armed robber" on it. These are the worst looking fake cops I have ever seen in my life. Marathon app and saw two guys who were impersonating police officers. Badly. Let's have a look. CPD, open up. We need to ask you a couple questions. Can I help you? CPD, we need to ask you a couple questions. I'm sorry? CPD, we need to ask you a couple questions. May you please step to the front door, please? CPD? Yes, this is CPD. We would like you to step to the door, please. Can I see a badge? We would like you to step to the door, please, sir. I don't have to show you my badge, sir. My man. My man, you can't... You are terrible at trying to be police. You couldn't... You could at least put a bit of effort into it. You even saw there's a doorbell camera. Do you think anyone's gonna be in the doorbell camera is going to see you and think, oh yeah, you're police officers. You couldn't look like no armed robbers if I try if you tried. Come on, man. You don't even have your gun on camera. Your gun is even on camera. Stupid people. Y'all stupid. Okay, give me a second. Okay. In the footage, we can see a guy holding a gun and impersonating CPD. He also is aware of the ring doorbell camera, but thought that he's out of range, which clearly wasn't the case. I was about to say he has to think he's out of range, even though he clearly isn't. You can clearly be seen, my friend, and I clearly see what you look like. After the homeowner asked for his badge, he obviously refused. While the homeowner said that he just wants a second, he didn't end up opening the door. Of course he didn't! Instead, he decided to call the police. The guys obviously realized that something seems off, so they again tried to get the homeowner- I'm about to say, probably just sat there and just be like, um, he ain't coming out. You didn't realize he ain't coming out yet. Owner to open the door. And after this last failed attempt, they decide to leave. Before they left, however, one of the suspects took off their mask, which made them easy to identify for the real police. The suspects were later identified as twin. These are the worst. These are the worst. the worst robbery attempt I've ever seen. There might be worse that I haven't seen. But this is bad. This one's bad. What's worse is this probably works at times. This probably would work at times. If that doorbell came out and not been there, they probably would have just went and that, that could have worked. The people just take him at their word. Even though they didn't work here. Because they fucking dumbass did, couldn't even try to look like officers. 20 year old Devane Mitchell and 23 year old Tracy Murray. Both were asked to appear to court on a fourth degree misdemeanor charge of impersonating a police officer. I guess technically they couldn't say he was armed robbery because he didn't. They didn't rob anyone. Attempt, I don't know if attempted armed robbery is a thing, but. They definitely uh, impersonated officers, so at least they had something charged to them. The following CCTV footage shows a father in the intensive care unit of a Chennai hospital in India. It shows to what extent families go in pursuit of inheritance money. On the 5th of September 2015, 82-year-old Dr. Rajagopal was getting treatment at his son's hospital. The father's daughter and two other sons enter the room as well. The sister asks the nurses to leave the room. What follows is something that would be very hard to prove without any CCTV camera capture. Thank 
This is one of those ones I've, I I know what this is, right? This is um, I don't remember what happens, but they unplug something from him, hoping he die so they could get inheritance money, and then force him to sign uh, inheritance papers, money to give the money away to them. It's so fucked up how far people will go for money. Y'all are that fucked up in this world. But you're all so fucking desperate for money that you will end a life, your own family member's life, for money. I like money as much as the next man. I ain't fucking going down that road. Now, I ain't going down that road. Ain't nobody meant to die just because you want money. You want money? Get a job. Earn it. During the situation, the son takes out documents that he had hidden in his clothes. The sister and son force and threaten their father to sign the document with his fingerprint. What happens next is even more sh So it's the two s Hold on, is it the two sons and a sister? Because what I've always heard was one of them was his wife. Maybe I'm wrong, or he has thing we've just been given different information. I always thought one of them was his wife. Talking. After the son concealed the documents in his clothes again, the sister wipes off the ink of her father's thumb with a cotton pad. All of this happened while the father was heavily protesting. Then the sister removes the IV line, which delivers life-saving medicine through her vein in the neck. The nurses realize that something seems off and begin entering the room to check on the father. The son tried to walk out the room with the signed documents, but was quickly stopped. While other staff enter the room, he managed to still escape the room and was also captured by CCTV camera as he was leaving the hospital. In the room, the father explained what exactly happened. That his own children tried to take his life and forced him to sign documents for inheritance money. Obviously, his children denied every accusation. As his daughter was asked to leave, the disconnected IV line falls to the floor, pretty much exposing what she has been doing so far. A nurse takes notice and reconnects the line. Thank God. Thank God, because he would have died. Yeah, they tried to kill him. That is attempted murder. That is attempted murder. And if that had not fallen to the floor, no one would have noticed it and he would have died. And when he would have died, it's unknown if they, if it, that camera, this camera is a fucking lifesaver to this father and this hospital. Because there was no way you could prove this if this camel was not there. You could not prove this. Thank God this camel is there. Thank God. Essentially saving the father's life. Yeah. The daughter and son both realized that this didn't go according to plan, so they decided to run. They were both captured by the CCTV outside of the hospital and were pursued by a nurse. Initially, it was unclear what the children exactly did. Police reviewed the footage and decided that this was an attempt at homicide. Yes, there was. However, this was not what they were charged for. They only received a warning so far. After two months of the incident happening, the father died due to declining health. I checked a few articles to see if there was any other punishment. But to this date, the children were not really charged for anything. Before we proceed... What? What the fuck? India? <laughs> oh sh... What the fuck? How do you look at that and not go... We'll give him a warning. We'll give him the old... The old slap on the wrist, eh? Hey. We, we're not doing anything else. We won't... No, no, we're not gonna charge him and send him to jail or anything like that. They didn't fucking... Eh. Yeah, they, but the health... I, I guess you Indian people... There's the people in India. Maybe the police in India would do the same thing. Maybe they're all just corrupted or something. I don't know. I don't know how you look at that and not think that the person that they deserve to go to jail. I'd send them. I'd want them charged to meet. Hell, the father was even probably want their asses charged. What is wrong with y'all? How did y'all keep? How did y'all just give him a slap on the wrist? How? See, let's quickly talk about today's sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped took me. No, you ain't getting no sponsor this out of me. There you go. Tina Take. Mm -hmm. 
This one's a bigger rabbit hole and only received a bit of traction in the last few days. Before I start with this segment, I just want to state that the entire following section is purely based on speculations and theories collected by multiple anonymous people. I also share my insight based on what I was able to see on the website. Okay, so the following section is purely speculative. Don't harass anyone mentioned in this video. I condone that same thing. Do not harass anyone in this video. At all. You do and I find out. I will call your ass out here. Okay, I will. If I find out someone here has a raster, I will call you out and shit all over you. And shit, I will talk shit about you the entire. I will do a whole video talking shit on you. I dare you to test me. Please do not harass any individual that is being discussed in this video. On the subreddit Internet Mysteries, someone shared the following Weird YouTube ad called Tina Take. Anyone else seen or heard of this? Tina Take. So about a year ago. So this says, just found this subreddit reminding me of the weird website I was wondering if anyone had any information on. So about a year ago I was watching YouTube while doing chores and didn't want to get get to the most skipping ass. So I let it play out. It was a weird old man talking about his new website Tinker Tank. It was supposed to be for rating teachers. But it looks so unprofessional and sketchy and don't think that's actually what it's for. I just looked it up again so I'll include a link. Can I find the YouTube channel so he used to have up where he posted more videos about his site? Tina Take, if anyone has gotten, uh, Tina Take, if anyone has else has gotten this ad and wondered what the heck it was either, just really bizarre and felt like it could be a cover up or something, but who knows. Go, I was watching YouTube while doing course and didn't want to get to the remote to skip an ad, so I let it play. It was this weird old man talking about his new website, Tina Take. It was supposed to be for rating teachers, but it looks so unprofessional and sketchy. And I doubt that's what it's actually for. I just looked it up again, so I'll include a link. Cannot find the YouTube channel he used to have up, where he posted more videos about his website. Did anyone else get this ad and wondered what the heck it was? Just really bizarre, and I feel like it could be a cover up for something, but who knows. To fully understand why this Reddit user thinks there might be something more going on, we should take a look at the YouTube ad they saw. Well, more specifically, we should take a look at the Tinner Take YouTube channels. The videos are mostly the same, so it's sufficient to watch one of them. Hey, today I want to go through the sports poll or the sports questionnaire on TinnerTake.com. I'm on the index page of TinnerTake.com. There is how you spell Tinker Take when I'm on the index page. We've, uh, we're signing in with our email address and uh, password. So we just log in. Here we are on the entry page. Remember on the entry page you have a link here. So we have a guy who seems to be in his 50s or 60s explaining how to use his website. In the background we can see people being filmed. This, or a variation of this video, is what people saw as a YouTube ad. While this doesn't seem that fishy or unordinary, your impression might change when you take a look at the thumbnails of his videos. They look like creep shots. We can mostly see teenagers who are wearing short clothes and who are filmed near their school or university. Looking at the location... Okay, yeah, that's got a sketch. That sketch I ain't gonna lie. That's a little weird. That's a little weird. It's a little weird. Shouldn't be taking pictures of random people without their permission, just using your little screenshots and your thumbnails. That's kind of weird. That's that's sketchy. That's fucked up. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't care. Don't do that. Since we see in some of the videos on Google Maps, it becomes apparent that he was filming in the University Boulevard in Tuscan, Arizona. And some of the people that can be seen in these videos are students, and some of them definitely underage. There's another. My man, you can't. I don't care. Do you think this old, this sixty-year-old man's a little creep? I don't care if he doesn't mean to be a creep. He is a creep because he is filming, and he's taking pictures clearly of people without their consent. And these are underage people. He's a fucking creep. 
I'm not saying he meant to be one. He might literally think this is harmless. He's a 56-year-old man. He might actually think he's harmless here. He's like, he's just using him for a thumbnail. He's not harassing them or anything like that. He might think he's harmless. You're not harmless because you're taking pictures of people without their consent. You are not harmless. Another channel called Tiener Take Topics, which shows way more footage in the background of the videos. Let's have a look. Recently, President Trump saved about 800 to 1,000 carrier air conditioning jobs from being outsourced to another country. I would like to look at what would have happened had those jobs been outsourced. So let's say he didn't save the jobs of these hard-working individuals. He didn't save their jobs. Oh, yeah, you're a creep, my man. Listen, if this is you filming, you, you 50-some-year-old man, you're a creep. You need to be, you need to be looked at. You need to figure out who you are. There's a reason, there's a reason you're hiding, I don't know, uh, Exodia did this, I doubt it. You, if you did this yourself and you hid your face, old oh man, there's a reason you did. It's because you know what you're doing is kind of fucked up and people might hunt for your ass. But if you're covered up, people might not be able to find you. I know your thought process. Because you know this is weird that you're filming people without their consent. You're filming a bunch of young underage girls without their consent, you sick freak! You sick freak! What's wrong with you? Jobs, their jobs got outsourced. Alright, number one, for your, the, or any company that outsources, um, the board of directors, the owners, the stockholders, elected to reduce the cost of those air conditioners to fifteen hundred. So we save two hundred dollars because they're outsourced. Saving on labor. He's basically driving around and filming teenagers. Yeah. Combined with the somewhat purposefully chosen thumbnails, it gives off a bad impression. Yeah. But I don't want to jump to conclusions just yet. I will <laughs> He's giving me a lot of it I've already seen enough to know. What my information is. I've had enough information. I've seen enough stuff to make a conclusion. It's always tempting to form an opinion based on a few things that you see, but this could be very harmless, and the guy might not really understand what he's doing. Well, with the follow- That is possible! I will still admit there is possibility that this old man, this weird old man, there's no idea, actually does not realize in his head what is going on. That, that doesn't make it okay. That doesn't make it okay. Not one bit. Not one bit. Makes him a sick freak. And he, he, needs, he needs to realize what he's doing. Someone needs to educate this man and go to him and be like, you need to take this site down and stop filming these people. Because you're looking way more like a predator than you want to be. Following information, this impression might be inaccurate. His website somewhat shows how calculated he is. He seems to be exactly aware of what he's doing, and he seems to follow a specific goal. Let's talk about the actual website. Okay. The website Tinder Take states that this website basically functions as a social media site, where you can express yourself freely and communicate with like-minded individuals. Another important aspect is that the website wants you to grade your teachers, high school, university or college, and everything else school related. The main demographic that this website wants to attract are students aged between 13 to 22. Yep. While the website layout looks somewhat off with the pictures next. The, I will say, the one pic, it's the, it's the middle picture here that made me go, that's not one I would have chose. Just my opinion. Um is a very here's the thing it's a if this is a scenario okay he's unaware of what he's doing someone needs to tell him what he's doing because someone has to look at him and explain to him why this is weird and why what he's doing looks weird to people someone needs to tell him Thanks to the text, it seems fairly harmless on first glance. At first After glance. a bit of clicking around, we'll get to this section of the website. This part of the. Okay, hold on. Let's just let me just say this. Why just in this situation? Why do you need your relationship stats? 
There's this, there's some things here in this identifier paper about yourself that I feel should not be needed unless you have some other thought process in mind. The website is extremely elaborate and it's all about data. They are very transparent as to which type of information or data will be collected. Yep. They will collect the following information. First and last name, email address, sex, date of birth, current city you live in, hometown, relationship status, about me, whatever you want to say about yourself, profile picture, maybe of yourself, other pictures and picture notes that goes with them, takes, whatever you wish to type in concerning, TV, movies, music, and takes on sports, takes on fashion clothes, notes and pictures you may post on the board of a mutual person of interest, private notes and pictures you may send to a mutual person of interest. What does that even mean? What does private notes and pictures you may send to a mutual person of interest even mean? What are these? Uh, the last two was the weirdest ones I think now. I'm curious to me. That and your relationship status. Update notes and pictures you may send to all your mutual persons of interest at one time. And this seems to be only a small part of the data collection. It's odd to collect this much data from teenagers. Yeah. So how are they gonna use it? Well, towards the end of this website, they shared the following. How TeenerTake uses your personally identifiable information. TeenerTake will use the information it receives about you to help determine how to best distribute information and suggestions, place ads if we ever get any, and further develop the website. You don't need my information for that. That is something you need to do on your own accord. You have no need to have my, my information especially that much information to decide if you want to place an ad on this damn website. That is your choice, that's your ability to do so. You don't need me to do that. Teener Tech will not share the information we have about you with anyone unless one of the following conditions exists. We remove the connection between the information and your identity. You give us your permission. Teener Tech gives you notice. To somewhat comfort the user whose data is going so a Tina Tech could just say, hey, we're giving you new information, and that's it. Hey, we're going to use your information, that's it. You have no say because, like, wait, well, hey, we give you notice. You didn't give, we didn't give you permission, you gave us notice, so... Tough sh Like, what? <laughs> gonna get harvested. They also share the following. TinaTech.com does not engage in online activity tracking of its users and other parties on TinaTech.com and does not engage in online activity tracking of its users over time and across different websites when a user uses tinertech.com. While all of this sounds somewhat professional and realistic, we need to keep in mind that this website is targeted towards teens specifically. If you it's, there's too, it's too much information. It's just too much information. This is fine. This is fine. I'm just, weirdly, at first I would think, why do you need their own sex? But judging, goddamn, the way the freaking world is today, you probably need that information. Because if you didn't probably do it, the world will go into a fucking tailspin. Lose their mind if you think you couldn't do that. Like if you didn't ask for what sex they were. So fucking hell. Um, but yeah, this this looks fine. Huge amount of their data is getting harvested once they log into the website. The website owner bought ads through Google AdSense, and his ads were running on YouTube videos. He probably earned a larger sum of money through selling data to be able to run the ads in the first place. While you could just argue that this guy is trying to make money through morally questionable reasons, this becomes a bit more shady with the following information. I already talked about the YouTube videos, and I said you could argue that these are mostly harmless. But what about the metadata of these videos? On YouTube, you can add a title, a description, and tags to your video. Looking at the title and descriptions, you won't find anything too interesting. But what about the tags? Well, this is the part where I really felt like my initial suspicions were confirmed. Hmm? On one of the videos on the Teenager Tech YouTube channel, the tags read Social, Teenager, Great Teachers, Young. Why on earth do you have the word nude, topless, and sexy involved here? My man, that's when you end. That's where it ends. See these three words? See, sexy, nude, topless, 
my friend, that just sent your ass. That means now, you are now a freaking predator. Because that's what you put here. You have to write these down. You have to put these tags down. You did that. Girls, guys, teen, teen or take, Facebook, sexy, high school, nude, topless, college, chat room. You'll see the same few tags used in pretty much all of his videos. Take these tags. The creep shots used as thumbnails and the overall creepy footage taken from teenagers who are wearing short clothing and you'll have a very shady looking YouTube channel. His exact intentions? I have no idea. If he's only trying to harvest data to make money, why use these thumbnails, this footage of teenagers and these tags? It makes sense to assume that he's selling this data to make money, since he was able to run YouTube ads, but is there more to it? This topic seems to be something that has been going on for a while. Eight months ago, someone created a subreddit called Teener Take for, quote, investigating the mysterious and creepy website Teener Take. This subreddit contains posts from people who have mostly stumbled upon this topic through the YouTube ads. Most of them claim that this website is used to harvest data in order to actually traffic people. Since the information that the website asks from you is very specific and would make it very easy to identify you if you were to give out your real information. And someone even shared the full docs of the owner of the website on the subreddit, but I won't show it here for obvious reasons. Lastly, someone actually messaged the owner and even got a reply through mail. This back and forth might actually be even more significant than it might appear at first glance. In this mail, they also mention way more stuff that I didn't even mention so far. There's even more explicit stuff on the website that I didn't go into. Let me read out the entire interaction. Hello. A few people have gotten ads on YouTube advertising your website. Just by taking a quick glance at it, they already figured out that there's something more going on. The overall low quality presentation. The fact that some image file names are named stuff like Head Freckle Cutie and Hardy in a Chair. The fact that it asks questions like which one of your classmates is harder, the insane amount of personal info you collect from your users, so on and so forth. It just comes off as really weird and creepy, especially coming from a 60 plus year old man. Someone made a subreddit dedicated to investigating your suspicious website and people have made plenty of discoveries. In case you're reading this, I'd appreciate some answers. Then the owner replied with the following. Answers? There were no questions in your email. It was basically what you thought of my website. The website's been up for years. The separate thingy, whatever that is, is years old too. I have about 13 videos on YouTube that explain and demonstrate how to use the website. It's all public and has been for years. In his defense! In his defense! She did never ask you- This person- I'm gonna say she. I didn't mean to say she, I just did. This person never asked a question. There was no questions in the email. It was just a person giving their opinion. So he does have a right to say there were no questions in the email. However, I would think he probably knows what the person meant by this. So maybe still answer why you use and say and do the things you do. Thanks. The owner seems to be fully aware and conscious about what he's doing. Yeah. He says he's been running this website for 13 years already with the same intentions. Like I said in the beginning, I'm not accusing anyone of doing anything. I just look at the information that is provided and that he himself shared with others. To this date, this topic remains somewhat mysterious and the exact intentions of the owner unknown. At the end of the day, right, let's, let's, let's drive back. At the end of the day, this, uh, this guy's, what, 70 years old? This site won't last much longer. Because this man won't last much longer. He's 70 years old. Plus. The Tuscan Police Department in Arizona received a call reporting a man who looked to be impersonating an undercover police officer. The caller stated that it was with a couple of friends and parked his car on the side road 
When it's a oh, we've seen this one many of times. We've seen this one many of times. We've seen this specific thing of the guy putting the guy in handcuffs. It looks like he's taking him to a car, although I think it was pretty much confirmed with the fake cop video that nothing actually happened to this people. Like, they were never... They, sorry, there's banging going on in the room next to me. I'm gonna assume they're... I don't know what they're doing, but they're doing something. They're banging. That's bothering me. Anyways. I think it's confirmed nothing's happened to the people in here, so I don't think we need to worry about being, you know, kidnapping people. So I think we're good. Suppose an undercover police officer pulled up next to them. All of them were searched, and one even put in handcuffs. The police station verified that this undercover cop was in no way a real police officer. No. Real police rushed to the scene, but the impersonator quickly drove away once he saw the guys calling the police. He even left one of the guys in handcuffs. A few days later, he was tracked down and arrested. Police said when they arrested the man, they found a lot of gear similar to what an officer would carry, such as a baton, handheld scanner, and a radio earpiece. They also we said in the um, fake cop thing, it's so shocking to me how easy it is to become a fake cop. Like, it actually baffles me how easy it is. Because it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that easy to fake being a cop. It just shouldn't be. They found the unmarked vehicle with red and blue flashing lights installed near the visor of the windshield. After further investigation of his belongings and car, they found a dash cam which recorded numerous incidents of the impersonator pulling over people and searching them. I honestly cannot wrap my head around as to why he would do this. What were his power? It's literally all it is. He just wants power. And you get power when you fake being a police officer and you're in control because no one's going to argue. Right? No one's going to question it, even though you should. If it look like this, it might not be a cop. That's why you ask for supervisor. That's why you ask for help. Why do you ask for someone else to help them? Because if they can't give one and they, they start acting shady about doing that, then you know why. Anyways. Yeah, so he just wants power. That's all, that's all he wants. It's intentions. The sergeant added that it might be possible that the impersonator was approaching people to confiscate their drugs. Regardless, he was charged for impersonating law enforcement and kidnapping. Yeah. Fortune. I'm curious, what the heck is this? I don't know this. This one was recommended by a viewer named Bruno on Instagram, and he shared a strange rabbit hole that has ties to Fortune. This isn't super creepy or anything, but it is a fairly interesting rabbit hole. The okay. Kemetic Order of Azaka is an online group that claims to be descended from an ancient Egyptian cult of vampires. <laughs> Every what? now and then a few anons discuss this topic on the Paranormal Board X. There's one archive 4 post from X from someone that tried to start a genuine discussion about real life vampires. First off, if you haven't really looked into this topic and think that it's complete BS, let me tell you that there are actually niches, even in Germany, of people who come together on online boards and forums and identify themselves as vampires. What? Really? There's a whole group of individuals who dress themselves as vampires? That is... That is actually amazing to me. That is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I love that. That is so weird. I love it. I don't know why they do it, and I'd love to know, but I'd love to know why people identify themselves as vampires, but sure. As I recall from my memory. Whatever works for you guys, I guess. Memories. They usually meet up, and one individual will usually donate their blood while the other one consumes it. There are a few documentaries about this already, and this phenomenon is nothing new, and the community should have gotten bigger over time. I won't really go much more in depth about their communities and their intentions and beliefs. But if you are interested, you can take a look into this yourself. I mainly want to talk about...
I'll just say this, if any of the people who identify as a vampire want to comment on this video and explain why you do this, why you are, you feel you're a vampire and all that, I would actually love to know. I'm not even gonna sh- I'm actually- this is just genuine curiosity. ...about the specific online group. In the 4chan post, one of the first annals shares a very interesting insight. It reads, As far as real vampires go, I'm aware of two things. There's an organization that may or may not actually exist, supposedly based on the Isles of Malta and in Portugal. They go by Kemetic Order of the Asad Ka, and whether or not Kemetic Order of the Asad Ka, okay. Uh, they have any actual abilities, if they exist, they probably think they do, and I wouldn't put it past them to sacrifice some refugee and drink their blood if they got the chance, based on their literature. There was also a threat on here a few months ago talked about vampires in Latin America, which is probably one of the few places I'd be willing to believe something like a vampire could live and go undetected. Not sure where the archive could be found though. I don't know what to say about that part. A few months ago talk about in Latin America, where probably, which is probably one of the few places I'd be willing to believe something like a vampire could live and go undetected. I don't know why that, I, I don't know what to say about that. That just seems such a random thought process to have. They're like, oh, land America? Yeah, I bet a vampire would live there. That, that'd be where the vampires live. Don't know why my brain... That, that's just weird. Weird thought process. Something like a vampire could live and go Thanks. undetected. Not sure where the archive could be found, though. My space ball is not working. What the hell? What's wrong with you? It's messed up. Are you fully come in, right? I don't know what just happened there. That's the way my space bar stopped working. Uh oh. Now, while some parts of their posts are exaggerated, it shows that this group seems somewhat invested in what they believe in. He talks about specific literature that this group uses. On their website, we can see that they have numerous books and even one full version of their main book as a PDF. Their main book is called the Essetian Bible. They share a lot more on their website, such as a manifesto and vampirism. However, a lot of people in the thread called them out for scamming people and making false promises. The problem also is that the main information about this group is created by themselves, so it's incredibly difficult to find info that has not been made by group members. A Twitter account that belongs to their group is called Luis Marcus. This person talks about all kinds of stuff related to vampirism and occultism. This person is If you, if you, the person who runs this, if you find this, please follow, if you speak English, please follow me on Twitter. Please follow me on Twitter. Find me on Twitter. Find me some way. I, I don't know how you could because I don't really want to put my Twitter on here. But find my Twitter. If you can, and you somehow do, find my Twitter. Or come, if, you, if you're the one thing. Give me permission and I'll find you on Twitter. I want to have a conversation. I just want to have a conversation. That's also the author of all of the books that can be found on the website. As for other members, there's one YouTube channel called Sarah Angelique. She basically promotes the books in these videos and claims in a video that she isn't affiliated with Asad Ka. Why does she specifically mention this group and why did she promote I want to talk to the I want to talk to anyone associated with this. In any way, not even in like you have to be a member, just someone who's in this vampire world. I want to speak to someone. I'm just now curious. The books and other videos she may just be a member of the group, but not actually an official channel. Other than that, the information on this group is very limited, but I thought it's an interesting concept to show in a video. Dash cam, abducted man in a car. The dash cam of a police car captured the moment a police officer pulled over a car that had expired plates. And three people. Oh, we've seen, I don't remember what video it was, but we saw this one. We've seen this in a video before. It was the guy, they had expired plates. And the officer pulled it over and ended up 
you hear the screams coming out of the trunk. I opened the trunk. There was a dude. The, the owner of the car was actually in the trunk, tied up. And the two people, who, the people who were driving it, had stolen it and kidnapped him. Yeah, I remember that now. I, that's, we saw this in a video. I don't remember what video. I can't figure it out. I don't remember. But we saw this in a video recently. People were inside the car. While the police was asking questions, he soon realized that something felt off. For a questioning about an expired plate, they seemed too nervous and anxious. It didn't add up. To add to his suspicion, he would hear a kicking sound and yelling coming from the inside of the trunk of the car. Consequently, the officer would call for backup and forcefully detained every suspect. Upon opening the trunk, they could see a man. The man had a towel around his head and his hands were also tied. After further interrogation, police learned that this man was the owner of the car. Yeah. He finished his work at a gas station and wanted to drive home, but was attacked by the three suspects. He was beaten, tied up, a towel was wrapped around his head, and then he was thrown in the trunk. Before they closed the trunk, they told the victim that, quote, this isn't personal, we need your car. At the traffic stop, the victim could see It probably isn't, but it isn't business either. So, I'll take it personally. If you steal my car, I'll take it personally. See red and blue flashing lights through a gap in the trunk and started pounding and kicking the hood, yelling. All of the suspects were arrested and identified. It's unclear what they were going to do with the victim. Also keep in mind that if the plates were not expired, they would have probably gotten away with it. Yep. If the plates were not expired, they would have immediately gone away. They would have. That man Bobby would not have been alive, at all. The traffic stop may not have happened in the first place. Man captured on me. This one happened only a few months ago, on the 13th of December, 2021. A disguised man, armed with a handgun, showed up to a Sebastian home and was captured by the ring doorbell. After standing there for over a minute without any response, he leaves a message. Bro! Bro! These day and age, people can have ring doorbell cameras. Why on earth are you throwing your gun, showing your gun around like it's no big deal? You know how stupid you are for that? You think anyone's gonna answer the door? If they see that you have a gun around you, you think anyone's gonna answer that door? You dumbass. We can't answer the door right now, but if you'd like to leave a message, you can do it now. Hey, just wondering if you guys saw Lost Puppy. He's a pit bull. I believe he came in your yard, but I don't want to look without your permission. After this, he decides to wait a few more seconds. The man on the other end finally responds. Hey, you at the wrong house, dog. Alright. Sebastian police. <gasps> Why do people do Listen, you try to break into the house, all they need to tell you is, nah, go away. And you're like, oh, okay, well. I tried, I mean, he just lit. My man, you got a gun. You got a gun. Lee, like. You thought you were so damn tough. You just, you just, just try it. What's the worst thing that happens? You die. But I mean, you could die even if they let you in here too. This is still looking for this man to this date. This happened near Etna or Etna Street and Schoolman Drive. Nothing else is known about this incident. And that's it with the video. If you have any video suggestions, you can open. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this reaction video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.